What's up guys, the February Patreon rewards are now available. Terminate, Elspeth's Sun's Champion, and the Ur Dragon are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves, or by clicking the link in the description below. Welcome back to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Thank you for tuning in, watching, or listening, doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. And as always, this show is brought to you by you, uh, the main friend. Thanks so much, guys, for supporting what we do uh, on a yeah. monthly basis. We really do appreciate, appreciate it. it. Uh, you guys are phenomenal and help us do all the cool stuff that we get to do. So uh, we really do appreciate it. Today we are talking <clears throat> about worlds uh obviously worlds was this past weekend over valentine's day weekend uh -huh. um i got to tune in a little bit uh i did kind of catch up as i could on the standings and everything like that uh but we'll go into all that stuff as we go in through the deck list the the players that kind of a thing yeah uh though also one last thing i did want to talk about before we jump into the random card of the day is our giveaway winner. So uh, for those of you who don't follow us on Instagram, uh, we did uh, our first Instagram-only giveaway for quite a while, yeah, actually. it's been a minute. It's been uh, a lot of YouTube stuff. Yeah, it's been a lot of YouTube stuff. We finally did go back to an Instagram giveaway just to, to shout out to those people. So uh, lots of huge uh, following coming out of that. We really do appreciate the support yeah. there. And Jason Kastik... Uh, was our winner for that. Uh, congratulations to you, buddy. The bundle is on the way. We have it shipped out. Uh, Verbal bundle of joy. Yes. So we really do appreciate it. Or at least it, though, magic guys. cards. I hope it brings you joy. <laughs> at least magic. Right. Uh, I love it. Um, also, we missed uh, the last podcast episode. Sorry about that. Um, he we apologizes were every time. I do. I feel bad. I feel an obligation. That's why we have a schedule. I've not a fuck to give. About All right, it. random card of the day time <laughs> in three, two, Listen, someone one. got to not care, Kevin. That's fair. Uh, I'm glad it's you. Uh, <laughs> Assassin Strike. <laughs> uh, it's a sorcery. It's for four and two black. Destroy mm -hmm. targets, target creature. Excuse me. It's controller discards a card. Uh, this was in Return to Ravnica and Battle Bond, and it's right. literally just for limited for yeah. drafting. Yeah. It's a good, solid kill spell for draft. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, just absolutely. Target but... removal is always good. Yeah. Um, um, well, I say it's always. expensive, but I guess That's that discard right. is nice. It's expensive, and with six mana, I like, let me play it on you instant, wanna, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. Please. Yeah, it's a sorcery that is kind of slow. You can take your, like discard thing i get no you can't because murder's three mana uh, so okay <laughs> yeah this is just like a it's just <sighs> real slow that's all i mean it's fine you play it but yeah, like of course yeah yeah. You, you have to draft it but you draft it probably like within a round i'm guessing six cards you think that in your pack or something five you or six at six mana i think there's better removal in return this was return to ravnica right and battle bond there's definitely better removal in Return to Ravnica. I know that. Yeah. But for Battle Bond, Battle I'm not, Bond, I don't I'm not remember. as like keen on, so I don't know. And yeah, that was a weird we like yeah. two headed giant draft or something like that. Like it was really weird. Yeah. You didn't. Um, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't I remember did not Battle get Bond to draft at during all. that. I call, I have a bunch of Battle Bond. I opened a lot, but I didn't. I do it. remember Return to Ravnica. I mean, this being fine, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, granted, I haven't drafted. I mean, I haven't drafted Return and uh god a decade now um <laughs> isn't that crazy yes to think because like it that was return to ravnica og theros like those days that was mm -hmm. when i sold out the last time of magic and then mm -hmm. after that is when i got back in okay. like i skipped yeah. a few sets and then jumped back well, in that was when i started playing competitive magic we talked about that yeah, well actually yeah. i guess a set or so before i really got into it with uh um as innistrad was wrapping up like, yeah that that time frame was and when see, I, I missed in a i jumped in for man. return to ravnica and then got out at like right after the theros block yeah which was like such a weird time to play yeah i guess you didn't miss a ton of things um i missed in <laughs> I mean <laughs> oh right sorry <laughs> that's pretty thick the best limited 
format it that there's ever I, been. Uh, probably mean, the best set there's ever. Well, that might not be true, but it's at least I think my a lot favorite. of people would agree with you though. Yeah, um, it's definitely thing, a lot of people's favorites. It's my favorite. I know it's a lot anyway. of people's. It's like that and OG Ravnica are like up there for people's sure. favorites a lot of the time. Ravnica sure. is my personal favorite, but yeah, I like. I mean, I like Ravnica for like the. I just love multicolored things. I just uh, like the yes. guild mechanic, like that kind of thing. I do I think as well. That's sweet. I think it, it's very like focused in the things it gets to do. Yeah, which I exactly. Like a lot. And like it, um, it's just cool to see how those interactions come about. Sure, sure, sure. Um, sure. But anyway, let's uh, jump back and man, we that yeah. did not take long. Yeah, this card's good. You play it if you got to, and you're like not unhappy about it. But six mana yeah. is kind of a lot to kill a thing. It is a lot. It is. I guess you, if you if you got to spend six, you're killing something important. So I mean, yeah, honestly, that late in the game, you better yeah. be killing something. So good, that card but... probably matters a lot more than you know. So I guess six is fine. That almost forces you to use it on something important. Which so this I card mean, might be the fact that it's a two for one is great. Yeah, because it is a two for one. I mean, assuming they have a card in their hand is sure. the scary part though. Because like turn six, there's for certain decks, there's a very real chance that they don't have cards in their hand really sure i mean yeah. if they're a i mean we were just talking before this like white weenie style decks are very mm -hmm. aggro focused decks like they may not have a card in their hand yeah, on turn six it's very true um even in limited that's a and very strong possibility land, but i mean but it's still value it's i guess right um you anyway, anyway yeah that's about all there is to say it's not played and constructed for sure yeah it's not worth it um will yeah what are we talking about today buddy we're talking about worlds oh worlds. yeah i said that already uh <laughs> the uh, tournament that happened in pretty hawaii beautiful honolulu yeah it was a really pretty venue uh well, yeah hawaii's gorge congrats oh speaking of hawaii uh -huh. because we can't stop tangenting we're uh -huh. talking about that for our honeymoon you should go to hawaii yeah it's I, gonna be great uh to I, be I, will and i's honeymoon my fiance and i's yeah, honeymoon we've already been <laughs> yeah. um and it was lovely it was a great time uh where'd we go <laughs> that one island <laughs> <laughs> yeah we went to that one island uh we went uh, that one island if you think about it isn't everywhere just kind of an island but a bit yeah we bigger but just bigger or not and they made different words for it yeah it's a peninsula well that's a specific flavor island oh, that's pardon. that's surrounded on at least three separate ends of it by bodies of water. Pardon me. Now we have more islands. And the Hawaiian Islands technically an archipelago if you want to get, you know, down to it which is a series of islands um, in the same body of water within a certain geographical distance. Um and then continents. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> what happened in worlds, Kev? All right. So Paulo, Paulo Vitor Lana Del Rey. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it worked. Uh, PV won it. Yeah, I'm just going to call him PV. Congratulations this is to him. First world. Well, obviously, his first worlds, right? There's never yes. been. Was he, did he participate before? I believe. I, I think... believe he did, but I, I don't remember specific years. Um, but this is his first worlds winning, I believe, as well. Let's so find out. Uh, congratulations to him. Really strong showing with Azorius Control. Sure. Uh, which, I'll be honest, I didn't expect. Again, we were talking before the show. I was thinking Fires of Invention would be the deck to win it. Uh, Jeskai Fires in particular. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's um, a sweet deck, and yeah, it just Paolo, does the most broken things usually. Paulo's first Worlds came in 2006, by oh, the way. Pardon uh, me. I did not know that. I didn't know that. In I don't know him. Like, I, I've seen him play a lot, and I've watched a lot of his content, but, sure. like, I don't know his history very well. Good for him. Yeah. Has Is he, he in the Hall of Fame? We should know that. Should we? From maybe. I don't mm, know. I should, we can find out. He's from Brazil. Yeah. Uh, Did know that. He. No, he's never won it before. Okay. Is he in the Hall of Fame? There's only been one back-to-back -back winner ever. Which Shahar, was Shahar. yeah, Shahar. Right. Yeah. Um, which was kind of crazy because was he also young. the youngest? He's very young. Yeah, he was eighteen when he won the first one. I want to say. And he's from Israel, yes. if I'm not mistaken. That Good is for him. Correct. He that's is, awesome. He resides in... No, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's a lie. He was 14 when he started playing. Ah, uh, okay. He won mm. He's... Oh, God, let me think. 14. <laughs> You're mathing right now? Yeah, he was 18. Oh, okay. Well, that's young, for sure. Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Worlds. <laughs> Have you seen the movie Chicken Little? Yes. <laughs> okay, do you know the part that he's talking to his dad and he's like, what are we talking about? <laughs> that, remember that you part. said it perfectly i don't know what made me i don't that. remember that part anyway. all i remember of chicken little 
is um, they're on the spaceship, <laughs> yeah. and the is it a pig who's real big? Yeah. Is he the yeah, pig yeah. one? And he's just breathing into the bag? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that ever calmed people down. Is that a yeah, real that's thing? Yeah, so stupid. Do you know people that do that? No. I don't either. Is that um, a... It's like an old school thing from my understanding. I wonder if that's... I loved uh, Fish Out of Water from that movie, though. It was just a fish with like a bowl Didn't of water. He, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's like, that the best thing in the world. Yes. And that was um, his name, was Fish Out of Water. Yeah, right? it was literally Fish Out of Water. God. <laughs> do, they, do you think people come movie. here for magic content or not? I, I don't hope remember. Not. If they do, they've got their, their expectations. I sorely was and kind of pinning my lapel on uh, good old RDW again. Really? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's come out hard and fast. It's just kind of being an annoying, like... Yeah, it's, it's never if you gone don't... away, man. Like, no. for a while now, it's Well, been... that's the thing, is they... Like, there's stuff that's in, uh, I guess, this deck that was indexed previously, just in other yeah. Yeah, other yeah. kinds of cards. Bonecrusher Giant comes to mind with its stomp being, you know, oh, shock. Yeah. Well, uh, so good. Light at the stage is really, in this deck, most of the time, just bolt. It just yeah, turns most into of bolt. the time it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, it being sorcery kind of stinks, but that's okay. Yeah, but um, with the spectacle costs on it, like it's mm-hmm. not that expensive or anything. I'll so. pay one red for three damage in standard. Yeah, Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, but and then Embercleave is kind of just the big. It's the haymaker, man. That's the one that I kind of was thinking. Because uh, it's it's not even it's like. Because you can usually kind of tell when the Ember Cleave's about to come down and everything. Yeah. So it's not even like a sneak attack thing anymore. Right. It's just like, well, what are you going to do about it? Like, because it's basically, coming down real quick. Basically, now. you stick it on like Annex. Yeah. And it's nasty. Oh, it's um, stupid. It is ridiculous. So um, it's just, I just, I feel like it is always just pushing the envelope more and more. Yes. Um, no, I certainly agree with that. The, I. I think the reason I was putting Jeskai Fires at the top was because of, like... So, like you said, Red Deck Wins has the Haymaker play of Embercleave, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Fires has just, like, Haymaker after Haymaker. You know what I mean? Sure. And, that, and it plays them for free, which is, like, ridiculous. Um, yeah, the Cavaliers really kind of... They're <laughs> yeah. insane. And, like, Cavalier of Flame, you get that out and swing in, and, like, what yeah. are you going to do? Um, cause you have all the untapped mana in the world thanks to mm-hmm. fires. So it's right. like, it is ridiculous. Like it, it goes over the top the quickest and like the best in my opinion. However, it is, I mean, I, I hesitate to call it a combo deck, but I guess it is. It's yeah, like, what else would you call it really? That's my thing. Like I guess it's, it's reliant but... on fires of invention plus right. bombs. So yeah. it is kind of a it's combo. Its engine is an enchantment, so is it an aggro deck? I yeah, don't know. Uh, yeah. But like you know, okay, turn 4 I got to watch out. And like I think yeah. that's what put Azorius Control uh in PV's hands. I think mm-hmm. that's what put him at like a strong contender because it's sure. like well, if you just play around fires, then mm-hmm. most of the time, not all the time of course, but most of the time you'll be able to to see it coming and deal with it yeah um and and in a more efficient way with things like dobin's veto things like that sure um, i mean it does it does nothing to protect its fires at least no, the it's, list that it's I've a seen. goldfish deck like 100 so, percent almost so it's it is a very just like well i hope i get there kind of deck mm-hmm. but i did think you know a lot of people have been playing it i know and it's a very popular choice right now so it is, i thought it is. that it would go over the top well um, a lot of times what we see is it so it's popular but it's also not broken in any yes. way yeah, like yeah. yeah you get to play free things but it's neutered in that you can only play so many free things every turn so yeah, it's not fair. like yeah yeah it's not like slap down anything you get you want. to a turn right and if you right. if you can't do anything too broken not only you do you only get two you can only cast two cards so it's yeah not like, it does completely like neuter that i mean yeah. if you get like kenrith out you can do some broken stuff uh, uh yeah but none of it again is like super it's not broken broken but it right. allows you to do more with your mana is what i would argue that's, and like that's cavalier true. of and flame kind of does open. the same thing but kenrith yeah. is a lot more flexible and yeah. that obviously he's got like five abilities so like right right uh, <laughs> that's fair um so there's I guess just, just a lot of cool potential and, with it yeah. but um I do think that because it's so popular, I think that was just a good meta call on PV's side. Not just PV made that call. Um, but well, a, a bunch few of other people. people were playing Azorius Control. But yeah, well, so what are the reasons to play Azorius Control right now? Um, the the biggest one to me is actually a creature, uh, Dream Trawler. Oh. Well, tons of people have talked about. So um, good. It's a nightmare and limited. <clears throat> it being it rare is really unfortunate. It's insane to me that it is a rare. It's it. Yeah, 
I, I struggle to like come up with reasons to be contrarian in that, but yeah, it's just kind of dumb. <laughs> and it's so rare. Uh, three five flyer three with five. three five. Yeah, <laughs> I I jumped to flyer already. Yeah, no, that's fine. I jumped the shark a little bit for the Sphinx in this the case. Sphinx. But it being a three five flyer with lifelink already is pretty nasty. Uh, six kind of mitigates that a a bit. <clears throat> Um, but then it pumps itself and draws a card. Well, and the like, thing is, so mean. It reminds me. So the the fact that it pumps itself it on drawing die. a card is just like ridiculous. Yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't die. die. The the fact that it has a built in bonus for something that you literally have to do every turn and can yep. do more often every turn yep. is like ridiculous. It's sort of like lo- the landfall mechanic where mm-hmm. it was like, well, mm-hmm. this is just clearly good because you have to play lands to do anything. Yeah. So like. I mean, that's like an old reference, but I'm just saying that, like, you know, you're going to do this anyway. Why not get value off of it? And Dream Child sure. is just like, here, have as much as you want. Sure. Like, <laughs> yeah. And it digs you out of spots, which is insane. It is like mm-hmm. the perfect control finisher. It definitely is. Um, Archon of Sun's Grace, though, its buddy in this deck, its other lone oh, other yeah, creature, yeah. is also like a pretty solid one in this list in particular. Uh, it constellation is nice when you have stuff like banishing light omen of the sea uh i think the birth of melodis too is yeah they're pretty good saga um there was was there not elspeth conquers death is the one i'm thinking of where it exiles a thing oh yeah, um, yeah. but it just encourages you to play these other enchantments that kind of you know control the board a little more yeah. uh either pump your dudes or, <clears throat> or or exile their dudes and then yeah. it gets to grow you a little bit so this deck kind of with very few resources here, it kind of expands itself and uh, gets combat steps when other control decks maybe wouldn't. Yeah. Um, it also, like you were saying, has good control packages. Uh, it's pretty well uh, endowed in counters. Mm-hmm. Um, Absorb is pretty nice. Absorb is sweet. And we see uh, that. I mean, PB runs a four nice. of. I'm sure a lot yep. of the other ones do too. Dovin's Veto with yep. three of. Uh, Mystical yeah. Dispute, two. Which is interesting. I love these. I love looking at lists from like worlds versus lists from just like the latest, like, you know, random championship or something. Sure. Because you see a lot of like four ofs, maybe some two ofs in the championship stuff. Here, there's like one Archon of Sun, one Dream Child. It's like very specific. Yeah. You know, we get the four, three, two on the the counters here. Like, Mm -hmm. that's just. That just goes to show you how much work goes into it. That's all. I think that's really cool. I think a ton. Um, um, yeah, I think. And we talked about that one of Field and Ruins. Field of Ruins. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. PV's deck. I think. So we were trying to figure out what lands are worth right. killing, and there aren't any? No, there's not really um, any. <laughs> the only, like, splash uh, non basic we could think of that I could think of was Lotus field what is it it's lotus field but right. there's no there's no, no lotus, lotus field and you have deck. to assume that he knows that going into this so well yeah the, the lists the lists are uh, the lists are yeah, yeah i yeah. believe before. um so i guess so, you just take them off a of color you know? i mean it has to just be of like well there might be a shot that i could take them off a of blue or take them I, off a of red or do yes. something like, like let's just go for it although not even because if they run any basics at all they just get it oh that's true you know does, well, does it, it sets them back a turn, though, I guess. Does it, does it come in tapped? I don't remember. No, it just puts it on the battlefield. No, yeah. I don't... I don't know. That seems Maybe strange. it's for your... That can't be for your own. No. Right? Unless... What would you be trying to kill? Oh, no, dude. I don't know, dude. That seems crazy. Hey, I got nothing for you. I mean, for whatever. You. I got nothing for you. Well, they're all the, there are the castles, I guess, still in that are kind of like... Yeah, the castles. I guess you could. I, I can see. I don't. I, whatever. I mean, he won, hey, so he yeah, knows yeah, what he's yeah. doing better than we do. Um, sure. The just one, in case it's good to have a just in case. The one of deck huh? that I love, Jun Sacrifice. Ah, uh, sure. <laughs> By sure. Piotr. Uh, I thought this was great, and everybody apparently pegged him for playing this because he was very open about it before deck lists were That's submitted. Fun. Yeah. Right. Um. I mean, it's sweet. It's the cat combo. Uh. Obviously, Jun for things like Corvold. Uh. We've got the Gilded Goose Trail of Crumbs, which is one of the newer additions from uh, Throne as well. But, um, lots of good stuff in this deck. It like I did get to watch one of his matches. Uh, and I don't remember what he was up against. It might have been a Fires deck. Okay. But, 
like and he did kind of technically have the combo together but it just got outpaced like the what is the cat combo in the cat deck? combo is uh cauldron familiar with the witch's oven that's the same thing it's always been trailer oh, crumbs that. helps you do that is the food stuff too okay but like, so it threw me when you were saying cat combo because i thought you meant like no uh, cat combo just in that cauldron familiar being a cat um got it yeah because yeah. so, i was racking my brain i was like there are no no there are no in no. tokens in this deck um, unless i no, 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 severely no, no. don't you're, understand you're exactly right um at, like Piotr had a pretty solid board state he had the witches oven out he had like two cauldron familiars i think and a mayhem devil out so like he was yeah, pinging and like doing that's his what thing. you want as i mean we that's talked what the about. deck is meant to be right that's what you but do. just wasn't fast enough it just got outpaced like the fires deck obviously doing yeah. way bigger things when, the, than that. when they plop down a like six five yeah it's that can swing in i mean <laughs> it's hard to like justify doing a damage to face yes. when you know it's just it was too slow that do it. um he right. was the only uh <laughs> junk player in the field yeah uh, definitely. which i think is hilarious but good good for him for showing a good uh representation there. it's tough because you you want to go all in on the strategy that you've kind of pegged as your win con but yeah. you also need to think about things that are gonna take you out yeah which is undoubtedly uh in fires decks those um you know cavalier boys yeah exactly and girls <laughs> ladies thems and theys whatever whatever they may we'll be. be ambiguous yeah um it's up to them whatever they tell me whatever you know, overall though it. one thing that we wanted to talk about a little bit uh was the production quality which oh, is a really yeah. odd thing that it's... we're gonna talk about but <sighs> what what would how would you sum up what you've seen i like they're i mean they're taking a page out of like esports in general you know oh yeah they're, they're trying to make they're trying hard. to make magic like that cool competitive ed not edgy but like sharp crisp yeah thing like high quality kind um, of thing yeah because i mean the production value Which is what we do uh, <laughs> all right <Sorry>. uh, <laughs> the, the production value like really reminds me of if i were to go and google like an athlete's um yeah uh like stats over the years i kind of get that feel yeah of these pages uh like you can just go to magic.gg and and just see what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um. But Paulo here, he like looks like a UFC fighter in this. <laughs> they like up the clarity and the contrast on the photos yeah, to yeah, make yeah. it look edgy and stuff. It um, was yeah. Yeah. Which is fine, but like it's cool. It's it is just cool. Here's... Kind of the generic way to do it nowadays, which is fine. I just there's a reason for it. I'm sure. But... I just feel like well, yeah. This is kind of like I'm sure this is like other people watch like esports and things like yeah, that and this yeah, is yeah. kind of the format and yeah. sports look like this there's a bracket list which there always has been to some description but mm -hmm. it's very in your face now and we like brackets us people we gotta love them um it just i don't i'm gonna be blunt i just don't think it's sustainable for magic and i'll let me kind of expound on that uh magic's gotta get like more fun for new people yeah and i just don't think it is i think at this point uh i think that they're over the like very recently people like the magic has endeavored to bring new players in yeah like put out products to bring new players in to be more attractive to a new player like there's the new formats that are more sure. accessible there's well there's the planeswalker decks that come out every year mm -hmm. um we have a new you know pioneers like pretty new it's just getting the training wheels off its bike yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of well figured out at this point but i mean it's doing well too yeah it's and it's very fun to play um i think that like that was a big win for the magic community but yeah. it's not a win for new players really like mm. th like they have no connection to the the sets that are in it beyond just here's a new format my friend told me about and yeah. i guess we should kind of figure out how to play it which is fine but big tournaments like this don't i think don't bring a lot of energy to an already jaded community if you don't yeah. have an infusion of like of new like fancy players like if this was coupled with way more marketing because i didn't if i didn't know what magic was i didn't hear anything about world I until i started looking for stuff i honestly think that's the big problem so i nothing even on twitch until it was like world's time yeah i mean i had heard a little bit but i kind of had to i didn't have to dig necessarily but i was looking for info when i found it so like right. i i will say i was digging enough that if i hadn't been doing that i probably wouldn't have really kept up as much yeah but like 
it's I, I like watching worlds i really enjoy it i didn't get as much time to watch it live as i would have liked to this time yeah but the I reality is the i time. think I you're exactly it, right but... as a as a new player coming into it you never would have heard of it and like yeah no. worlds is like i mean as a new player worlds has got to be like probably only interesting to a fraction of new players oh because, for sure you know they're new to the game they don't know who these people are they're not no, a no, part no. They of don't the care. community and they, they shouldn't. don't it's fair they shouldn't but like that could be an avenue world championships is a really cool avenue to get some new people in if they wanted to you know what i'm saying like get some interest built around it is all and so like i think yeah. marketing is their pro i think they're spending a lot of money on the production of it yeah. which is fine like i'm all for it i think you know the game make it bigger make it better that's well, cool yeah like that's all great but like push it out there do a little more yeah. in that range um i do think uh the fact that they did worlds on arena this time i was cool with because it did make it easier to watch sure in terms of just it was interesting like animations and things make it interesting so that was kind of a, a natural progression okay um yeah yeah like that was cool uh the uh they i did read somewhere uh arena in like the last quarter of last year or something like that gross like well above what they thought they were going to get that makes sense to yeah me. um and so i'm wondering if they're like they're just reinvesting some i'm sure they are in some level but how much they're reinvesting in like why in production value and marketing that kind of thing i wonder what their skew is yeah i mean i expect them <clears throat> i i expected them to invest in arena pretty heavily at least in the next few years because oh, it's yeah. their new it's their new thing it's oh, cool yeah. um but i think with hearthstone having done so well for so long there are other like card games yeah like digital card games that have that are coming out and have come out that have done well um but arena with some a few bumps in the road, right? Oh, there are some definitely. things that people have have bitched about. I'll be blunt again. Yeah. It's <laughs> suck it up, but um, <laughs> this isn't a family show. <laughs> well, no, I mean they're they're like some people are a little upset about. Uh, well, first off, historic just flopped entirely. Oh, that just was a belly fail. flop, which is a little uh, like upsetting. I honestly uh, thought about because like obviously we've been talking gameplay for a while we haven't mm -hmm. been able to put it up because of jobs and stuff like that right now but um we were talking about it and i was like well what's something because like you do drafts a lot yeah when, I you, love when you post content it's usually drafts yeah um we were getting some standard gameplay before and like that was fine uh i had dabbled in a little bit of both but i was like well what's a new like a different avenue i could take on arena and historic yeah. was kind of the natural like <clears throat> that's the yeah. last piece sure but nobody gives a shit no. <laughs> it's, so it's not useless. A, at this point it's not a fun format and that's no. not to say that they couldn't pick it up but they well the problem now is if they tried there's like this stigma against it now where I, it's like yeah. this is not a good format why would we try and invest in it on the know? one hand yes certainly um I mean, that's a bit of a negative way to look at it. I think as a company, you should pro probably not take that route. But I just think that, like, yeah, you know, a lot of people don't like historic for a lot of good reasons. No. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the 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 car, the card list isn't that big. The card pool no, is it's not. It's not a very exciting list. The the biggest problem with it is not excuse me, not necessarily historic um, in and of itself, but it no. came out so close to Pioneer. Um, well, was announced seemed to do nothing we were waiting for stuff yeah big announcement psych it's an entire new format it's pioneer no new news on the historic yeah. front they just, is that's that's the timeline of problems dies. right and right, they, right right they they dug the hole and shoved historic in is yep. really what happened yep yep <laughs> um anyway all that to, all that to say is i expected them to invest in uh arena because it's their flashy new thing yeah i th i think arena in and of itself is good for the game but oh, i love arena for the game arena is great um and i enjoy using it but what like the what is the marketing uh yeah, the marketing so what i will say in in the in the grounds of marketing the one thing that i'm interested and in, i want to get your take on it okay because i don't think we've ever really talked about this what do you think of the trailer videos that have been coming out for every set do you know what i'm talking about i do uh they're f fine i think that i mean that alone is not good marketing but i'm just asking what do you think and that isolated piece of well i think of they're marketing. cool i think they're like oh well, that's i if i didn't know what that was but i was kind of into these fantasy sorts of stuff. things yeah, yeah i'd be yeah. like oh what is that i would yeah. i would look into it more okay now would that turn me into someone who 
who if i didn't play trading card games if i saw that mm-hmm. and if i learned it was a trading card game would that make me want to play it not no, necessarily no i don't think so um would a like b-roll or kind of like spruced up footage of a tournament and like things going on Mm -hmm. like a i'll say this for every esports like event Mm -hmm. there's always like little trailers clips and cuts of all sorts of stuff of like the crowd of people winning of Mm -hmm. of big moments of reasons to be excited like you have to give somebody the proof that this is worth their time and their money um those things i think are way more uh they draw more people in than a really cool, admittedly, like yeah, it's good trailer quality, for a thing, yeah. right? I thought the throne trailer in particular was really cute with the the little love story <laughs> with the gingerbread people. Oh, <laughs> and then it didn't go well. That was cool. Um, I love all the like. I, I won't call them Easter eggs. I hesitate to call them that, but like all the little like, they kind of are though. They kind of are. They? Like all those little things that go through, and like for Theros Beyond Death, for instance, like. I thought the trailer was cool. I thought it was a good trailer. Yeah. And I also like the fact that for those of us who played during original Theros and kind of have a hink, uh, an inkling as to what the story, what's going on there, it's like, oh, cool. This is kind of further explaining a like highlight reel of what we're going to be in for in sure. this set. Yeah. And then for those of you out there who maybe didn't play during Theros at all, hopefully, I think it did this. I, I think it was interesting enough that it would get you a little bit more involved and be like, oh, this is cool. Like, if you play Magic now, but you didn't necessarily during that time, it's like, oh, well, yeah, I'm still excited for this. Because okay. it just yeah. looks cool. Um, yeah. But, I- like, I I don't know what needs to be done on the marketing side of things. Uh, the, oh, I, I, mean, I mean, I'm not a... I'm not a marketing person necessarily, but, like... Yeah. They need to push it to a newer crowd. Right. And that's... that's. I like, mean, that's just how you make a game survive. Yeah. That's so. my final summation, is yeah. that... Um, I think that to bring more people in, make it, give them a better reason to play other than what if, I mean, this is like me brainstorming on wizards end now, but like, sure. <laughs> let's what do if, let's, like, let's play in that field for a second. Yeah. Why not? Um, we do everything else for them. Um, <laughs> uh, Noise. what about something like an investment program where what they do is they take a percentage of funds from arena, wherever they're taking it. And they reach out to, because, like, for instance, uh, Winthrop University, Mm. they have a magic club. Invest in, like, transport for those people to come to Grand Prix or come to local events. You know what I'm saying? Like, that that helps bring people to your events Hmm. where, Hmm. on their end, they're going to spend money there. Like, they're going to join an event. Like, you pay for travel for them to get there or something. You know what I mean? And then, so they get more invested in the game because they get to play the game where they may not have otherwise been able to just get to it. And you're encouraging, like, a newer community who hasn't necessarily been to a Grand Prix Mm -hmm. uh, to to really take part in that event and see what that's all about and, like, invest in that, 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 uh, I don't know what word I'm trying to say, not event, but that kind of thing, you know what I mean? I see what you're saying. Yeah. That would be a cool thing for them to do. And that's not marketing, so to speak. That's just directly reaching out to the individual at the end user. Well. But I think that would be better. There's, that's a really cool point to bring up. Uh, esports, uh, and I think, when I say that, I think um, League of Legends and StarCraft yes. 2 specifically. Yeah, yeah. So those two games and esports in general um, have collegiate level events, mm-hmm. um, which... Magic has always been like an open format. Um, anybody can play really yeah. at any event if they register and have the points for it. Um, a six-year-old plays on PTQs. And I was going to say so. <laughs> anybody can do it. Um, however, would it not be kind of neat to have, say, like I don't know, colleges compete in yeah. a some sort of Magic Bowl or something? Like, just create some more opportunity, like regional mm-hmm. opportunity. Give it people reasons to play other than why the game's because here's the thing. Magic, I believe, honestly, if people just sat down and played it, they would like it. They would love it. Like, I'm teaching. I, so, Caitlin, my fiance. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. When we first started dating, I'm telling backstory. Let's go. Good. Like, All we right. started dating, and uh, she realized how much of a nerd that I was. Um, yeah. <laughs> and was like, hey, because she's badass, she was like, hey, I'll give it a shot. 
cool. Cool. Which is all I could have ever asked for. Of course. Um, so we gave it a shot. She, like, played it for a few weeks mm-hmm. and was, like, getting everything down. You know what I mean? Like, the basic rules, basic keywords. Learning she stuff. was getting yeah, 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 She yeah, was yeah, comfortable. Yeah. She could play on her own. It wasn't a big deal. Cool. We kind of fell off the bandwagon. She didn't enjoy it that much, and so we kind of let it go. And I, di- I tried not to push it because I didn't want to be the guy. That's, that's like, a bad way to. Do that's it. such a bad way to do right. it. I've done that, and that doesn't work. Um, so I just kind of let it go. Okay. Well, over the last week or two, she's like, "Hey, well, maybe we should play some magic again." And I'm like, "It's happening." <laughs> you know, Guys, it's happening. I'm like, the addiction is setting in. Um, it gets you. <laughs> it really does. It sneaks up and gets you. <laughs> it really does. Um, and I'm like, "Well, if you, I, I, I specifically was like, well, if you want to, we can, because I, I can't be like, yes, we have to do it now, right?" So uh so nathaniel uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a friend of mine uh came a friend over. of ours a friend of ours yeah uh he loves to cube and he comes over and yeah, cubes yeah, yeah. a lot and so uh he was over one night we were planning to winston draft the cube and caitlin was like well let me jump in and so we did an open draft oh, where yeah, i oh, could yeah, kind of help yeah. her through it but she enjoyed it and she had a really good time she actually beat us like 2-0 <sighs> she like just swept it Yes. She had such a solid deck. It was insane. Uh, it was like a white black deck or something. It was just value, but it was great. Excellent. Um, Excellent. So, but she enjoyed it, and that was Fantastic. that was the key. That's and so, the point. Uh, she like a few times over the last few weeks has been like, "Well, why don't you and I just sit down? We'll Winston draft, or we'll do whatever." We played a little bit That's of the fantastic. new Theros yeah, set. Yeah, yeah. We've played some of the cube, and she's she's picking it up, and she's kind of liking it again. And I'm like. All right, this is what we need to do. See? So I'm in. It's happening. So I don't know what the point was. but (laughs) I think it was, I mean, people sit down and play it and they like it. That's it. Yes, that was the point. (laughs) Uh, Whether it's, Commander I I have found is very, um, because I've tried to bring people in to play like Commander Knights and it's. That's tough. Yeah, especially depending on who you have. Like, you have to have a very relaxed group of people playing Commander to There's bring so new people into it. There's so much that can happen in a Commander That's game. That's the other thing. They get very complicated. It's nice to have restrictions a little bit when you're getting Yeah, man, in. and that's why beginner decks are so simple. Um, not that you have to be, like, ve- I'll say it, very smart to play this game. You have to be, like, I mean, you have to understand rules and, like, yeah. keywords and be able to read. Right, and that's it. So, so I mean, you can if, that if that's how you think you want to get your buddy to play Magic, sure, by all means. Um, <laughs> but it, it can be difficult. But giving, I think my whole point, yeah, if I can bring it back to center. Was yeah. uh, you have to give new people a reason to play, other than it's it's really fun. Because in this day now and you're age, you're trying to convince them it's fun, and like you can't do that. In I this mean, day and age, every game is fun a yeah, little bit, yeah, yeah. right? It's just it like what makes your cupcake special you know yeah, kind yeah, of thing yeah. that's fair uh especially with hearthstone every new update that comes out yeah. like it, a bunch of people are playing that for some fucking reason yeah, I, don't, so, I don't get it and i, I know a bunch right, of though. you like hearthstone out there and that's yeah, fine sure. it's just but i, I, can't I, do I it. think you're right i think that what we need to do so first of all the there's kind of two things that need to happen in my opinion so yes to your point we need to bring new people in mm-hmm. to the community and like enjoy see that this is a community that's worth being a part of and there's a lot of great fun to be yeah, had. So stop being a dick you that's you know the who other you are. thing is like i mean <laughs> everybody's everybody's a dick sometimes i get it but yeah <laughs> there's also a subgroup of individuals who need to calm their shit because the goal if we want this game to survive yeah. all of us everybody yeah, yeah. has to be like Not- in the same vein, we're just here to play a game and have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hate this. This is my biggest gripe with Magic players. I'm calling all of you out, all oh. 10 of you that listen to this. 10,000? Yes, <laughs> that. The thing that I hate most is when people take the game way too seriously. If you're competitive, yeah. I get it. That's fine. There are, there are time, There's a time and a place. I, yeah, there's a time and a place. If you're at a tournament, you're in a competitive situation. I get that that's a little bit different than kitchen table magic with your friends, but yeah, 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 yeah. it is a game, people. Right. Keep it in perspective. It is a card game. Right, 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 right. It is not meant to be, like, the center of your life and your reason to express all these, like, random political views and things. Like, fuck it. It's a fucking game, people. Yeah. Like, it's... <laughs> It's. Int- I love the game, it's, but it's a game. It's interesting. The like, 
uh, connection I think people have to magic players as a community and, yeah. and other elements of things. Yeah. It's it's fascinating, disturbing, and it's a little like unfair, I think. There's a lot yeah. of us out here. Um, and we all think differently about a lot of stuff. Of course we do. Um, but that's fine. That doesn't have yeah. any effect on the game. <laughs> yeah. You sh- I mean, gatekeeping is lame no matter where it is. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty fucking stupid if it's a game. Yeah. Um, it's like happened to plenty of people. It happened to me at an FNM. It's like, but at the end of the day, you got to boil it down to like, why are you being such a tool? Yeah. <laughs> like, we're just here to play some we're games. We're just here to play a game. Like, yeah. the the most fun times that I have playing Magic are when, like, a few people, namely you, probably yeah. Nathaniel, a few of us get together, we cube out for one night. We just draft yeah. the cube. That's the most fun. Super fun times. Because we're just all, like, sitting around having drinks and playing a game. Like, which is what it, in my opinion... Yeah. At the heart of what magic is, it's a game, and that's what it needs to. That's what it needs to stay as. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, leave it. <laughs> sure. So sure. there's some community building that I think and analyzing that we all need to do within ourselves. I will say though that recently we've been devoid of any kinds of. I was scandals. gonna say there's been a long Ex- time without. Yeah, like I, a significant issue. I guess there was. I mean, Owen Turtonwald's like the last one I can think of, right? Yeah, but I mean he yeah i mean there that was definitely a thing well in yuya no you just a cheater that's different that was just cheating yeah that was yeah, just wrong that's um, different and i i mean from my understanding owen turtonwald's issues were wrong but like i don't know yeah. that situation super well we talked about it a little right. bit but well it was it was it's pretty ugly but at, be that as it may that was the last did that time like that... because and you may know better than i do did that mm-hmm. cause like so the last big riff that i remember that was like huge huge scale mm. was the quartering and that whole thing years ago a couple of years ago the what the quartering mtg headquarters excuse me oh yeah remember that one and the cosplayer right and the cosplayer and that yeah, caused yeah, like yeah. a huge that was that like was one the, of the biggest that, that was the one that got us like us that being got the us magic fucked up published well that brought a lot of like the lights on the road just kind of thing right yes. um, yeah, yeah. a lot of stuff like came out in print and then when inevitably if something comes out in print the like <laughs> butt hurt <laughs> like asshole troll people have to yeah. say like it's bullshit and here's why undoubtedly it always happens yeah so <sighs> yes sorry that was That's one of the, the last... biggest ones that i really remember <clears throat> i didn't know that the owen thing if it caused like a huge riff by any means um mm, i once i mean not because i know there was a lot of issue over reed's like response and all that stuff but a i didn't little. think i thought that was more of a temporary thing well it no it, i mean look it was um people <clears throat> more so kind of like took to their sides and said oh yeah. well, i'm gonna stand for, i'm gonna do this and well i'm gonna quit magic and like nothing really happened yeah um, it didn't have the impact that right which is i guess is kind of good as a whole um i think that it hopefully um on an individual level people like got help that they needed and yeah, did the things course. they had to do absolutely um but it didn't like it wasn't as big of a deal no. surprisingly as the cosplay stuff yeah. um which is kind of interesting it <laughs> is because like someone actually committed a crime yeah exactly <laughs> Alleg- <laughs> a- allegedly but i i mean i'm not gonna victim blame at all so no, yeah, yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna err on the side of that yeah um, i see what you mean yeah. um yeah i don't know I, I i do think we've been at a fairly i mean with some waves but we've been at a fairly stable community base yeah. it's just that there's always somebody out there that's just <laughs> just a fucking douche yeah um just yeah. play the game enjoy the game that's yeah, all yeah, it is. yeah here's the here's a rule of thumb if, if there's always a fucking douche yeah but if you see a room full of dummies that just don't get it it's you <laughs> <laughs> that's the rule <laughs> oh i love that we did yeah. have somebody on our instagram um i posted crucible of worlds like just the card cool. crucible of worlds yep um and we've had uh and i won't call the user out by any means um Do but it. No, because th- I don't do think it. they did anything wrong. They just posted a question in the comment mm-hmm. section, like, why is this card good? Like, I don't get it. Oh, yeah, yeah, Okay. And so I responded with a few examples. I was just like, well, repeated fetch lands, mm-hmm. uh, wasteland triggers, things like mm-hmm. that, and then things like life the loam- from the loam decks that can bring back <laughs> the loam- Things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Crystal just to good. like give some specifics as to why mm-hmm. this is card this card is good mm-hmm. and then it turns out a lot of people were like you idiot like why didn't you get why this card was good and then they a few of them were just like naming some other things that were good i was mm-hmm. like cool that's fine like whatever and a few of them were a little bit hostile and then i was like guys like just calm down i mean it is yeah. a comment section you kind of expect a little bit of oh, that for sure that's but where, like, like morality goes to die in the comments yeah, section. exactly but... so i wasn't like surprised i was just like guys come on like it's fine um i try very yeah, hard lame. to like our account i try not to comment back and either take sides or breed one way or, or push one way or another yeah breed one way or another um hey okay <laughs> let's go uh, but um i was a little surprised by that i was like yeah it's kind of messed up that's lame if you know stuff just tell them don't yeah, be a it's dick fine. like they probably have never played with the guard before so just tell them yeah just let them know um so and um, hey maybe it's not good and we're all fools and okay I, so with to err on the side of caution what i do mm-hmm. when like somebody does ask a question or like they pose a question that seems a little bit hostile like they're like why the hell is this good or something like that i err on the side of caution and i'm just like you probably never played before you're a new True. player or whatever so i'm just going to answer it very flat if you continue to be hostile <laughs> that's where i'm like okay come on time dude. in a place that's yeah the, that's but the like you have to like benefit of the doubt at that point because i don't know you i don't know if you've never played with it before yeah. i try not to like you know push mm-hmm. that yeah but you know things happen yeah just hey just be nice hey man be kind to one another that's all enjoy the game guys hey that's all baby hey <laughs> hey just be good to one another baby <laughs> hey we ain't asking for much are we Hey, we just ask for a little bit of your love. Dude, I've just been looking at these. There's Reese cups here. I just want to eat one so bad. <laughs> hey, okay. <kid. laughs> you want to open one of them Reese cups? Yeah, kind of. You should probably wait till we're doing this podcast. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> All right. Um, just kidding. All right. Well, there's one more segment then. Is it? Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, congratulations. All of this to say, congratulations to PV for winning. <laughs> 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 um no worlds was i'm gonna go back and watch a little bit more of more of worlds yeah uh because i did cool like i said i got stuff. to pick up some stuff but production quality great let's do a little bit more on marketing in uh but wizards since i know you're listening right um yeah so <laughs> was really cool to watch though definitely i didn't watch it anyway. I, watched I, a little. It was I was uh playing with <clears throat> playing with my daughter all weekend oh i'm looking for a titan I I didn't get it. I got shattered this guy though. That's pretty sweet. I like that we are now putting the rares in the front of the pack. Do you? It makes it really annoying for crack packs. I'll be honest. I believe that, but uh <laughs> Okay, so I can just throw the rest Here's the thing, away. if I was forcing that white deck, yeah. I would pick Daybreak uh Chimera. <laughs> like a hundred percent. As a common first pick? Isn't that stupid? That's it literally No, you have Annex right no, here. No, 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 no. I know. I'm saying if I was forcing <laughs> So, okay, for anybody that doesn't know what I'm talking about, um, I watched a video. This is me, like, watching a video and trying to recreate what happened and sometimes working. Um, actually, it's working pretty well, if I'm honest, but uh, Newmont the Nummy, if you don't watch him, you definitely should know Newmont who that is. The um, fantastic streamer, uh, yeah, absolutely sure. great player, uh, truly an awesome person in the community, but he, uh, yeah, yeah, that... Um, he forced, he did a Thurs Beyond uh, death draft where he was forcing mono white because, in his words, he felt that was the most powerful color. And I'm paraphrasing a bit, but he felt it's the most powerful color. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he did that by saying, like, things like Daybreak Chimera is, mm-hmm. like, that's the best white common. Sentinel's Eyes, you got to take them. Uh, the little 1-1 one, one Constellation guy, well, I can't remember their name. There's a lot of like little cheap yeah, white creatures yeah. that are amazing for that deck, and you can go down to like 14, 15 lands and still get away with it. And then you get just repeated threats, and it it's True. super, super fast. You can win very, very early. Um, and it teams well with other colors. So I tried forcing mm. it, and it's worked. <laughs> and so I'm just like, I'm skewed now, though, is the problem. I Cause see. Because now every time I look at a pack, I'm like, where's the mono white? And I'm like... <laughs> It's not right to do that, but I got you. Uh, no, uh, Agax, uh, hardened in the forge is probably the pick. I would say I would. Um, I, I mean, don't know about Shatter the Sky and Limited. Yeah, I'm not sold on Limited either. Um, I think I don't think it's great. Sweepers and Limited in general are like they're hit or miss. They make you really kind of. Mm. It's the problem is, uh, oh, I got two Annex. 
That's weird. Wow, that's crazy. Um, well, I'm taking the foil constellation thingy, whatever it's called, the pro, the fancy one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but the problem with uh, Sweepers Unlimited is like limited games, as we've said a million times, not just us, everybody, are generally one with creatures. Right. So you got to play creatures too. <laughs> it right. Doesn't feel good to blow up your own creatures. Nope. Although um, if you are losing, it is a pretty good card to play. It's an amazing card to get you back. True. Um. So, but I I think I would just like to take the good creature. I tend to err on mm -hmm. the side of creatures and limit it a little bit further, just yeah. in general. Now you have to weigh though: is like evasion better than a dude who might get real stupid big? Right. And doesn't he make a little lot of little? He dudes? makes one one. He makes one one. Yeah, you got my sense. You got to take boy who make one one. I think you got to take boy who make one one. But yeah. Daybreak Chimera, definitely a very good card. Yep. Um, yeah. Thank <laughs> you to Grand Slam, by the way, for providing these packs. I forgot to mention that. Thanks, guys. You're great. You are great, and I miss you. Honestly, I haven't gone to play in quite a while. I mm -hmm. went over just before the pre-release for Theros. Mm -hmm. Dropped off some proxies. Cool. Uh, if you don't know. We don't really advertise this. Not that we shouldn't. We just don't. Um, what we do with uh, some of the extra proxies is... Well, not even extra proxies. Lately, the last one, we ordered specific ones for this. We made Ashiok proxies for it. Um, Beautiful. But we we sent some of those proxies over to Grand Slam so that for pre-release, uh, they could give those away just for free, just for anybody that wanted them, for those that played in the pre-release. So we gave them like 75 copies or something and they gave them out to people. Did uh, they give them all away? Uh, all but like five. <laughs> they had a great showing at this pre-release. Like it was great. Grand Slam needs growing. to get bigger. Oh, honestly, I, I talked to, was it Josh? I talked to somebody over there recently. Mm. Uh, I think when I was over there to drop out proxies and I was like, dude, you guys are like running out of room. <laughs> like, and they're like, yeah, we know. Like, I don't know what we're going to do about it. Cause they, they renovated that whole space. Yes. So they like they've invested a good bit in that space. Like I, I don't know what they're going to do if, if mm. they feel like they should leave or like find a bigger space or what they're going to do. I mean, that's the thing. Parking there sucks. Oh, so terrible. you have to either park. It's like in a plaza. So like you, the front yeah, of the yeah. plaza and walk over. It's not, or, it's not only is it in a in a plaza, but it's like in a it's corner. In like the corner. Yeah. yeah. It's it's wedged with three other businesses in a parking lot of its own lot. It's probably got like 10. Yeah. 10 ish. spaces, 10 or 12. Yeah. Now, granted, no one's at the massage parlor or the vape lounge. Weird. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ever. <laughs> um, I never see anyone else in there except no. for the dude I think who runs a massage parlor. Yeah, hmm. I can speak. You're I'm just great. having trouble. No, it's fine. You do a massage parlor. Yeah, that. Uh, one. So I used to pull up and like see him, and he'd look at me, and I'd look at him, and you just have that moment. Yeah, he looks at me listfully, like, "Yeah, can I rub your back for an hour, and <laughs> you pay me sixty yeah. dollars?" And I'm like, "No, thanks." I just, I, I, just cards. I pick up my my fat pack of cards, <laughs> and you just see him. Huh. Oh, <laughs> I know what he's here for. <laughs> um, yeah, but seriously, Grand Slam kicking ass. They're doing great. They're great. Good for them. Um, so if you are in the area, in the Rock Hill, Charlotte area, yeah, um, check it out. Shoot down to Grand Slam. Give them a look. See. Yeah. And uh, if you do get a chance to play in pre-release, you, you tell them who sent you. Yeah. If you go there, uh, you will get a free proxy just for fun. Yeah um from yours it's just our way because they help us out so much we figured it's a nice way to give back to them it's a little the bit. least we can do yeah absolutely so barring um, a massage from their neighbor just like pay the guy to like go over there yeah. and massage them <laughs> they like lay out there's like people playing this is my vision <laughs> there's like people sitting at one of those like tables yeah. that they have set up just like in the middle of this really intense commander game yeah and it's like really cl like people are going into it and then just Bar Parker just lays on the table yep. and it's just like sorry guys gotta, gotta get a massage and this random dude walks in like finally lays on the table <laughs> the lights dim yeah you hear flutes in the background yes there's like that bubbly spring <laughs> they move those like the Titanic song plays no oh man you've never <laughs> you've never really? had a massage have you no I'm not that would I'm not be very I don't think I could do it I thought that it's yeah. not a problem. Really? Yeah, they know what they're doing, masseuses. Well, I masseuses. mean, I assume they did, but I'm very ticklish. Like Kevin, I'm telling you. Will you touch me anywhere right now? And I will laugh. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. <laughs>
Can I touch you with my eyes? <laughs> Uh, that was good. All right. right. (laughs) There's nothing else I wanted to talk about. Are you good? I, um, yeah, I'm good without, yeah, I'm great. I'm super. That was convincing. (laughs) Yeah, I'm good. All right. I'm I'm good. Okay. Oh, guys, thanks for, uh, watching, listening, doing whatever you're doing. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you for the support on the giveaways and the support on Patreon. We appreciate, appreciate all of it. Uh, it truly does help us do what we do. So thank you guys. Um, yeah, I think we're going to get out of here. My Cue name's Kevin. that outro music. My name's Will. And this has been It Resolves. Where is that outro music? Oh, oh, can we do William Shatner's uh, cover <laughs> of Piano Man? You, can that be our outro music? Go for it. She packed my bags. Pre-flight!